there, welcome to Rev Hard Garage. Today, I want to show you how to assemble a Sonic Smart Tech input drum for a 4L60E transmission. Uh, if you order just the drum itself, you're going to have to press the uh, input shaft out of your old drum and press it into the new one and there's a little bit of a procedure involved there. So uh, that's what we're doing today, so I'm going to show you that. All right, so on the bottom of the drum, what we're going to do is place a spacer in here. What I've, I've actually got a master ball joint set, so that comes in handy a lot on the press. But uh, we're going to sit this on here. That way we can try to support the drum a little bit instead of break it. Because if you sit it on the outside part, most of the time they'll come out, but I have seen a couple of them crack or break. So uh, it's a good idea just to support it close to the middle. It's starting to move. You want to have a hand underneath so that you can catch it. It's generally pretty easy to press it out. So if you uh, if you feel like it's bound up, you just want to check, make sure you're not pushing on something, pushing on the wrong thing or whatever. But uh, now I've got that out. I'm gonna move this drum out of the way. That's a good drum I can use in something else. Alright, so it says in the instructions to sand down this front edge right here. Um, not where the spines are, but this corner right here. They want you to smooth that out a little bit, so we're going to do that right quick. Got a nice little smooth leading edge right there. So I'm gonna thoroughly clean this and I'll be right back. Okay, for this next part, I've got the press dropped down a little bit. And you can see I cleaned up the shaft. I, uh, I sprayed it with some cleaner and I actually hit that with some scotch Bright, so that it's nice and smooth. You can see where the old drum was, but it's, it's smooth right there. So I don't know if it's just stained or whatever, but um, regardless, what I like to do you're going to support the drum. You have to support it from this point here. You cannot use the outside of the drum. And so I've got a spacer here, you know, that fits really nice right there. And so I'm going to sit that down on this plate. I'm going to look through the middle of the drum and make sure it's centered up. You can see the dimple in that spacer I put in there. And you've got a wide, like a double tooth in there. And you'll also notice on the shaft right here on one side you've got this double tooth and it is going to line up your oil feed hole and so i like to face that to the back that way it's just easy to uh, line everything up so you can see that's going to drop down in there just fine right there and uh it'll only go in one way so that's fine now what we're going to do is take some Retaining compound. I usually use this 609. If you got a loose fit or something, you could use like a 650 or something, but you're not going to have a loose fit with this drum. This is a pretty tight setup right here. So um, we're going to kind of coat the threads. And we're not going for like super, super soaked, but we want to make sure there's just a little bit in all the splines. I'm not even squeezing the bottle, it's just kind of gravity feeding right now. And I'm just making sure there's just a little bit in each one. Alright. And then we're going to take and spread some of this stuff out on this area. Because this is the actually the ceiling surface right here. And so all you got to do is just spread this around really good. 
make sure everything's good. You don't really want it like dripping. So if you've got some excess, you know, you can get rid of that. And it should be good to go. So we're gonna line these teeth up right there to the back. We're gonna go ahead and press this thing in. And you wanna make sure everything is as centered up as possible so that you get even pressure. So this should be good right here. You gotta be careful when this thing bottoms up. You wanna make sure it seeds all the way, but you cannot put a crazy amount of force on this thing. So when you feel it stop, just give it a little bump, like right there. Just a just a little bump. And then we're done. If you go trying to smash that thing in there, you'll end up breaking something that you don't want to break. Because if you're doing this, you know that this is about a $700 drum right here. So the last thing you want to do is break this guy. So, we're going to wipe out the excess stuff that we've got there, the sealant, and uh, I'll show you guys how to put the reinforcement collar on. And also, you're supposed to look in this hole right here and make sure that the wall feed hole is lined up. I have no idea if I can get that on camera, but let me grab a flashlight. We'll see if we can get that. This is going to be hard to figure out but it is lined up i can see inside the shaft there i don't know we we'll just have to see if this comes out on camera we'll try but uh it's lined up so if it wasn't down all the way or something you'd see a partially obstructed hole but that's perfect feed through all right for this next part you're gonna have to support this from the outside not not from the shaft um and so the best thing you can pretty much use if you've got an old pump laying around or you can even order one online um, if you do this a lot or you may have another way that you can do it. Uh, but the shaft is so long, it's gonna be kind of hard to figure out a good way to support this thing. And so what I do is I take an old stator shaft from a pump and this is normally where it would go in the transmission anyway. But you can slide this guy over the input shaft and it'll be supported right there. So you can turn your plates where you've got your circle and you can put this guy right there and that perfectly supports the drum base. Um, that way you can get some pressure on here without worrying about breaking anything. So I highly recommend finding one of those stator shafts from a pump. Uh, they're not hard to come by. You can probably order them used uh, you can get a whole used pump on eBay for like $40, so you may be able to order just the shaft. I've never really looked. Um, I've just got piles of these things, so. But uh, anyway, that's going to be, you know, your best bet. And like I said, this is actually how it would go together in the transmission, uh, sort of, so. Anyway, I'm going to raise this up, and then we will work on getting this reinforcement color on. So now we've got this reinforcement color. And you'll see it's got a notch in it. And you'll also see inside the drum, you got your feed hole right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. You got your feed hole for your overrun. And uh, this little ring, a reinforcement collar, has got a, a dot on it that lines up with that notch. And that's going to allow that fluid to flow out of that hole. So you got to line that guy up like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some more retaining compound inside of this collar and then get yourself an old reaction gear out of a 4L60 and it pretty much fits perfect right on top of this guy. It's nice and flat and it clears this drum surface area and, um, and that's pretty much perfect. I also found this cap in my master ball joint set that will sit right on top of there so I'll just be able to push this guy right down nice and square. So we're going to put on the Loctite and you don't need a whole lot. This stuff, it goes pretty far. 
dab will do you. We'll just run that around in there, get a little coat going on. Line this dot up. Make sure everything is nice and square and centered up. All right, this is one of those parts where you want to make sure it's nice and centered. Just like that. I'm gonna make sure I got both hands. Hopefully this is not too close for the camera to focus. You just want to make sure everything feels nice and square and it's going down even. Nice and smooth and you feel it lined up, stop. And uh, this one's also pretty sensitive. So as soon as that thing bottoms out, you're done. Don't even don't even push it anymore. That's all you got right there. We can pull everything out, make sure it's all seated nicely, and it is. And that's pretty much all you got to do. All right, guys, this is uh, this is it right here. Got the reinforcement collar. Of course, you're gonna want to wipe the excess fluid off, thoroughly clean it. There's dust and stuff in there from uh, shipping and all that good stuff. So blow that out with compressed air. Make sure everything's really nice and clean and uh that's pretty much it as far as the other stuff goes you know it's pretty self-explanatory it's got a special apply plate and uh, a couple of little things that come with the kit you know for you to use specifically with this um because the reinforcement collar you know the stock apply plate is not going to fit so they've got one with a bigger opening to clear that reinforcement collar so there's that and then of course the other major component of this bad boy is this plate that bolts on. I never talked about that before. I know I talked about that before in a couple other videos, but uh, this is just a really nice setup. If you're on the fence about spending the money on it, um, I mean I just highly recommend it. You know, this is the difference between a good transmission and a great transmission right here. So. Anyway, I hope you guys hope you guys learned something and I hope I helped you out. And uh, you know, thanks for subscribing, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.